Hello everybody, it's DR Drake 63 here again today. Gonna do another unboxing video uh, of a cowboy action style six shooter 1873 Colt uh, single action takeoff or, or uh, reproduction, if you will. Uh, in the past, uh, I have uh, showed you mostly what's going on with Uberti's, uh, a Taylor Uberti as well as uh, as well as the Uberti Cattleman. And uh, today we're going to look at the Ruger Vaquero, which uh, a lot of people claim is the workhorse, the built like a tank, uh, not necessarily as true to the original 1873 design, uh, but very functional and uh, so forth and so on. So I uh, had an opportunity to pick one up that looks like it's never been shot, but I did get it at a used price. We're going to take, uh, take a look at one uh, today and uh, do some quick uh, comparisons against uh, the Uberti, the Taylor, uh, Taylor version, which uh, is the Smoke Wagon Deluxe. Uh, similar kind of price, brand new, and uh, so I thought we might find this kind of interesting. Let's take a look. Today we're just going to compare uh, first impressions, what they look like, what they feel like. Well, first thing you're going to notice, this Ruger comes in a modern looking plastic case. Um, you recall the birdie comes in cardboard it really doesn't matter I don't store my guns in cases uh, but uh, here you go there's your Ruger instruction manual here is uh, one in a never-ending series of padlocks that I own from various gun manufacturers and here it is it's in 357 magnet so um, um, I like to have the ability to shoot these with either 38 specials, which is my preference for both price and uh, uh, ease of use on quick target acquisition. Uh, but like I said, I'm gonna kind of compare this today to this Uberti. And this is, this is by Taylor's. And basically this, this particular firearm, which, you know, is a lot more of the traditional look with uh, the color case hardened frame, so forth and so on. Um, the grips, everything. And then of course you get this beautiful sound. Now this is the three click sound as we talked about because of this safety being inside uh, the firing pin itself. But uh, a nice firearm and uh, I've shot this and uh, have made comments in other videos but today we're looking at uh, this Ruger and I have just seen nothing but a lot of positive comments from people in the cowboy action basically their comment wasn't oh it's so accurate or oh it's so slick or oh it's a truer reproduction it's this thing is built like a tank and it's never gonna fail you so you know we'll see this is what it sounds like So there you go. Um, taking a look at this, this does not have the color case hardening in the frame. Uh, so it's not quite as pretty of a gun. But you see the Ruger New Vaquero 357 Magnum. I say it looks like it's not been fired. It's been fired a little bit. But in terms of looking at... Um, in terms of looking at uh, the cylinder, the bluing and everything has remained intact. This, uh, this barrel has not spent a lot of time in and out of holsters. And um, so you have that. Wood grips are nice, although I'm just going to say right here, I don't really care for the Ruger logo. It just doesn't have much of an authentic Western look to me. But uh, hey, to each their own. I know there's people that uh, are just fine with that. The screw that connects the, the grips on either side, again, not my favorite, but you can see here looking at it. Um, so first, first note of comparison I'm just gonna make. This, this uh, Taylor smoke wagon which is going to run you about 650 to 675 dollars 
uh, is in, in most aspects a truer representation of what the Colt 1873 looks and feels like. This Ruger is not as true a representation. A lot of people will give you that. And what I've heard most often about this firearm is that this looks like an 1873, but does not function like an 1873. How is that the case? Let's look at a couple examples. Okay. Now, if this were a, a true Colt and this were an older Uberti, you would hear four clicks when you pull the hammer back. Here, you hear three. And that's just because of uh, the compromise with the retractable firing pin. But you look inside, and everything else about this works just like it should. Okay, you're not going to get any movement on this cylinder. Even if you open the loading gate, you have to go into half cock position and then you get it okay and that's very very similar to how an 1873 Colt works looking at the new Vaquero you merely need to open up the loading gate and you can rotate this wheel there is no half cock position in that configuration. You bring it all the way back and it shoots the next round. The other thing I'm going to show you, there is no firing pin. You've got this crossbar safety and basically what happens is um, your hammer comes into contact with a firing pin that is located right underneath there. Okay, And so when this is going forward that lowers and allows it to hit the firing pin. So basically, it's really hard to fire this gun accidentally. And in theory, it's very hard to fire you birdie accidentally. The difference being with this particular firearm, it's got a lot uh, more stout mechanism to prevent that. And it sacrifices some of the authenticity of how the 1873 works. Okay. So the first question you're going to ask is, how big a deal is that? Is that a big deal? And the answer is, if you're out shooting this thing, and especially in some kind of timed, competitive type of situation, uh, you probably don't care at that point about anything other than how well does it function and how well does it shoot. And we will have a shoot-off between these two firearms, and we'll get to the bottom of that. But, uh, you know, this, this truly and clearly to me represents, hey, this is a modern take on the 1873 firearm. And, you know, just everything about it says we're going to look like an 1873 Colt, but we're going to function more like a modern firearm. Whereas some of the other copies out there, and again, I refer to this Uberti, uh, which, is, which is the Taylor's version, the smoke wagon. Um, this really tries to hold to that and including, you know, what it, what it sounds like when you cock it, everything else. Um, how big a deal is that? Again, when you're out shooting it, probably isn't a huge deal. Um, probably want to have two of these guys or two of these, uh, if you're going to, if you're going to be matched for, for shooting, but they're both shooting the same caliber. You could mix and match. I don't think anybody cares. Like I said, out of, out of this, probably the only thing I'd be inclined to change would be the grips. Because like I said, I, I just don't, don't like don't like Ruger's logo on there. Um, you've got a 4.62 inch barrel here. The complete uh, frame barrel and, uh, and cylinder, everything is blued. Comparing these to 5.5 inch barrels, which is kind of my preference. Um, in terms of a length for, for, for these guns. Um, but basically, whereas you can pick something like this up brand new for uh, somewhere around $450, give or take tax, shipping, whatever, FFL fees. You can pick something like this up 
Um, again, it's brought in by tailors. They do a lot to slick it up in terms of the trigger and so forth. Uh, you can pick this up for somewhere $650-ish, again, give or take shipping, so forth and so on. Here, you're, you're looking at spending similar money, $650 plus, for this, this firearm just as is. Okay? So, moving, moving the, uh, the smoke wagon out for a minute and just looking at a bare-bones Uberti for $450. And you're looking at 650 plus, so a couple hundred bucks more for these Ruger uh, Vaqueros. Now, um, is that worth it? I don't know. We're going to have to uh, spend some time shooting these. We're going to have to compare accuracy, and uh, among other things, we're we're going to have to compare uh, durability, which that's something I can't do over the life of a video. Uh, but uh, this is this is a, a finely built gun. Uh, it is, in my opinion, uh, built to a higher strength spec than uh, what we see with the Uberties. And, um, you know, it, it may very well be that over the course of shooting hundreds or thousands of rounds downrange through that, that uh, we'll notice the difference. And uh, perhaps this one won't have malfunctions with springs and things, and perhaps this one will, that kind of thing. So... We're going to find that out, and like I said, I can't do that in the course of a video, but uh, um, I find these to be very interesting firearms. I'm sticking with that 357 caliber. Um, 45 Colt just seems uh, too expensive for me, guys. 45 Colt, um, not as readily available, and, uh, you know, going with, with 38 Specials, uh, for most of the shooting out of these firearms, seems like it's gonna be the best thing for the life of them and my pocketbook. Now taking this particular firearm down is um, gonna be pretty much exactly how you take down any, any of these. You've got a spring-loaded pin and you've got your rod which holds your cylinder in place. Now, where you'd need to go half cock with uh, uh, the more traditional models and the Uberties, here you open up your loading gate, you can leave this hammer engaged because you don't have a firing pin that's going to protrude. And then this is spring loaded. You're going to push this pin, you're going to take this rod out. Okay. Now you can see with the open loading gate, it's easy enough just to roll this out. And there you go. You can see your frame. You can see your cylinder, and this is one of the first things I looked at. And uh, looking at the front of the cylinder, just really not a lot of markings at all in terms of uh, in terms of blast and so forth. So um, that's what has led me to believe this thing's as clean as a whistle. That this hasn't been shot a lot, but uh, as you can see, there's not a lot of difference there. Now looking looking here inside you can see where the firing pin is going to protrude. And again, that's, that's all going to be governed by the safety. The safety's blocking that from pushing it on through at this particular time. So that's about it. Um, of note, the ejector rods. Seems like it's... Um, Works nice. It's a little bit stouter spring than I have with uh, the other two firearms that I showed you. But uh, uh, doesn't get stuck, and that's the main thing. You want to be able to, you know, once this firearm heats up with repetitive shooting, you want to be able to get those rounds out quick. To reassemble, fit, fit that in carefully so that it doesn't scratch things up. Try to center it as, as best you can. Reinsert your rod. At the same time, you need to push down on your spring to let that back in, and there we go. Goes in just like it came out. And it's fairly smooth to turn on that. And there you go. You're ready to go. 
Uh, as far as the trigger pull on this, it's predictable. Um, a little bit, just a little bit of sponginess, not a ton, nothing that would be a problem for me. So we're going to have to see how do we, uh, how do we like this shooting with ammunition. When, when we do fire it, we'll, we'll use both 357 and 38. Um, but like I said, this is a plain Jane version of the 1873, um, which, uh, which is fine. It's, it's meant to be a tool. Uh, certainly when they were designed, there was all sorts of fancy engraving and all those kind of things available. But uh, also this firearm, uh, as much as anything else, was considered a tool. As I mentioned, uh, the Ruger Vaquero, the new Vaquero, which is the, the, the version we looked at today, uh, a very well-reviewed firearm. So, you know, please take my comments um, with, with this in mind. Number one, I am just very new to cowboy action shooting. And when I say very new, I'm acquiring the needed equipment and I'm shooting it. I have not competed yet. so. If you want to find out what is the, the best stuff to compete with, um, you can stay tuned to this channel and we'll learn together, but I'm not going to claim to know that at this moment in time. Uh, but having, having put that caveat out there, I am giving you my impressions, and uh, I can tell you that I'm a big fan of those Uberties. I've seen a lot of people say great things about the Vaquero, so guess what? We're going to find out for ourselves and do some side-by-side side side comparisons. I hope you'll enjoy watching that with me. But as far as these firearms go, um, I'm, I'm real excited to see how the, the Ruger Vaquero and 357 shoots next to uh, the Uberties. And uh, we'll find out. They are built differently. And uh, that much I am sure of. So... I uh, will appreciate any comments. I'd love to know amongst you folks that uh, are single action shooters what, what your experience is, what you like better, and why. And uh, that's the kind of information that uh, I think we'd all like to hear in the comment section. So I want to thank you again for watching. This is DR Drake 63 again reminding you to join and support the National Rifle Association and or any truly pro Second Amendment organization that you can. We need that. Thanks for watching. So long.